Hey, hey everyone, welcome to the show. I'm Amanda Gates and it's floor plan reading time. Hey, hey everyone, welcome, welcome. I've got a couple more plans that have been sent in. Um, this is something I do every fall. I offer up some mini readings on some floor plans. So if this is something that you are interested in, you can head on over to my website, gatesinteriordesign.com, and there is a pop-up that comes up on the screen that says free energy floor plan reading or something like that. And all you've got to do is submit your information and you'll get an ebook that explains how to do this. In order for me to read a floor plan, I gotta have a floor plan. <laughs> And not everybody knows how to draw one of those up. So if you go over there and sign up, you'll get that booklet and it'll explain to you not only how to draw up your floor plan, but where to send it. Um, we've actually had people email us about this promotion and that's not uh, what we're wanting. What I need is a floor plan. I can't do this energy reading without that. So have to have your floor plan in order to do this. The other thing I want to mention is I've gotten some emails from people going, what the hell is this? I've never heard of this. What's going on? What's happening? <laughs> Which I love. Um, so the thing is, is that this is, uh, you know, I'm an advanced feng shui practitioner. And so the information that I'm getting are the tools that I've learned, but it's also intuition. You know, it's things that I hear, it's things that come up. So it's much like a tarot reading when you go and get your cards read or an astrology reading and you get your stars read. And, you know, each of these is unique, not only to the floor plan, but to the individual that's in it. So a lot of the things that I do, you'll uh, watch these videos and I'll always talk about the top five disruptors because I want the audience to be able to have working tools that they can implement as well. We all have amazing intuition, but a lot of us don't take the time to cultivate it and a lot of us don't trust it. So if you're one of those and you don't know if your intuition is on or off or not operating at the moment, the top five disruptors are a great place to start to start getting the energy right in your own home. Now, you may be saying, why the hell do I wanna get you know my energy right? What's the big deal? Why, why does it matter? Well, a lot of times we go out and we seek external things to get our life right, right? We get better nutrition, we maybe hire a fitness expert and start working out, we go to the gym, maybe we start reading a bunch of self-help books. We do all these external things to get our life right, but a lot of people don't look at their environment as a possible solution. The problem is, is that if you're going out and doing all these amazing things to get your personal chi right, and then you go home to an environment or work in an environment that dilapidate you, beat you up, you know, does all this stuff to your personal chi, then you're never going to really be able to raise your vibration. And that's really important because when you raise your vibration, then a lot of the shitty things that go on in our life start to fall away. You know, your work environment gets uh, changed. Maybe you get promoted and you get around people that you love or, you know, maybe the the love of your life or the, the one you thought was the love of your life maybe goes away, but then somebody better comes into your life and it's because it's a vibrational match. So that's why this is so key and that's why this is so important. So that is what I do. I am a floor plan reading expert. I help people get an understanding of what the energy looks like in their own homes. And that's important because a lot of times we may be experiencing something that, you know, happens again and again and again. And we're like, oh my God, I'm crazy. I'm doing all this work and I'm doing all these things and it's not getting better. It must be in my head. And then I come along and I say, no, it's right here in your floor plan. And it's like, oh, thank God. So I kind of validate what's showing up in your life and the things that are happening. So that's the cool part too. So First plan that uh, we're working on today was sent in by Ivy. Um, says this is a one bedroom apartment. I'll be moving in in a few weeks. I appreciate your reading. So Ivy, I mean, overall great plan. Um, the one of the key things that we always want to look at when we're dealing with any kind of a space is you know just a nice simple shape you do have a little bit of a point in the back so that could be a little bit sticky for uh finances but also 
um, just the way that you are viewed. You know, you're probably this amazing, uh, incredible soul and maybe you don't wear your heart on your sleeve maybe you're stoic and you kind of hold things in and so people perceive you as kind of prickly or pointy or um, maybe not very social when in actuality you're just shy so that would be something uh, it looks like maybe your desk is there that may not be the best place for it because you are out of command so again that means that you're not being seen correctly. Basically, you know, things are going on behind your back. So that would be something where I would try to suggest maybe you can put a mirror up or something or maybe flip that desk around to help you. Um, I would also say it's probably, uh, you know, I don't know, since you haven't moved into this apartment yet, I should say a lot of times the things that are in our energy field are what we attract. So what's indicative of this plan are things that you're likely already experiencing. And my question to you would be, do you have a hard time getting things started? Do you happen to procrastinate a lot? Do uh, projects tend to be uh, difficult? Maybe you get them started and then you kind of lose interest. Or maybe you can't even get to the point to where you start them. Um, the way that this plan is, you would definitely uh, have failure to launch. <laughs> so uh, you may experience um, just being able to get projects started and, you know, moving your desk around so that you're not uh, having your back to the door might be a good place to start to turn things around, literally. Um, the other thing that I would say, you know, is the... Uh, other thing that I would have questions about is one of the things that I heard was hand, right hand. You know, are you having any issues with um, any type of carpal tunnel or maybe uh, hand issues, arthritis, pain, anything like that? Um, that was something that I had uh, pop up that I had questions about. And then just overall resources, you may find that... Um, you know, money may come in and it may be really great, but it could also be that you have to work really hard for it or, you know, it's like you make really good money and it comes in, but then something pops up and you got to, you know, it's like you just got this uh, great paycheck or this, you know, great amount of money and then all of a sudden it's like, ah, oh, damn it, I need new breaks or something like that. So I would, um, again, I think a lot of that has to do with your desk, maybe turning things around, um, not having your back to things and being able to see things clearly. Um, you know, I, I think having a mirror back there would work. And I would also suggest putting a, a mirror uh, over the door of your bathroom just to help you to get those um, ideas going, creativity going, and uh, just to hold those resources in so that you don't feel like money's coming in and going right back out. The great thing is, is that for an apartment, this is actually a great plan. A lot of apartments that I see are pretty messed up and uh, have a lot of challenging details about them. And this is great that you've chosen one that actually has some pretty darn good details about it. So just a couple of minor things and you are well on your way. All right. Maribeth is floor plan number two. All right. Um, first question I would be asking about is just overall conflict. Um, if you feel like you're experiencing conflict, I would say um, conflict in your relationships or conflict um, coming up in partnership. Ah, uh, yeah, probably partnership. Um, issues around partnership, either uh, difficulty finding a partner or maybe the one that you're in is challenging. I would say one of the partners is likely gone or not home or traveling a lot of the time if you are in a partnership. Um, yeah, I would say, um, you know, the way the plan is, is You've got a two level floor plan and like you've got, um, this has got to be, there must be a view or something because your kitchen is upstairs. There's got to be, you're either in the near a lake or an ocean or somewhere where there's a really great view because typically the living areas are not upstairs like that. It's reverse what the plan normally is. So you definitely have some relationship or partnership issues, and I would guess that uh, those are showing up either in family or in your uh, personal intimate relationships. Um, both of those areas are pretty sticky in your floor plan. And conflict. So conflict would be 
um, something that would show up that is something that happens again and again, which I would say um, is probably in uh, partnership. And I would also ask, you know, uh, which bedroom you're actually utilizing. If you're using the one that's actually deemed master bedroom, we've got uh, quite a few knife edges in there. So again, I was talking about the top five disruptors at the top of the show. Um, if your bed is in there, that means that you've got those coming at you. So you would likely have uh, feet issues, leg issues, maybe you have a hard time getting things uh, moving or you get tripped up a lot. So if that's something that you're experiencing, that may be why. Knife edges can be a little challenging. I would recommend that you go back and watch that video, the top five disruptors. I give some suggestions on some things that you can do. Um, they're not for everybody, but it is a challenge. And if you are experiencing those things, that's something that uh, by personal choice preference, you know, things that work with your decor, you can pick some of the options and I would experiment with them and see uh, if you notice a big difference. But I would say overall, um, you know, family issues, partnership issues, uh, or lack thereof, um, and you may find that you're out of the house a lot. Maybe you're the one that's traveling a lot. Maybe you work a lot, um, not in the house a lot. Maybe that's what's creating the conflict around relationships. So the big thing would be, I would start with that knife edge, go back to that video and watch that, um, and uh, fix your bathrooms because you've got two downstairs um, that could be putting a drain on family and um, just overall uh, creativity in your life. So, you know, sometimes we think of creativity as like having a job where we're doing really creative things like graphic design or interior design or advertising or something. But, you know, even in insurance, you got to be creative. In finance, you got to be creative. And so we have to be able to hone in on that to really be the best that we possibly can. So I would say that, um, those two areas would definitely be something to fix. But I mean, overall, great plan, um, great shape. You have a beautiful patio that clearly looks over something that is amazing. So that's something to take into consideration as well as if you do live near a lake or an ocean, particularly an ocean, you know, that chi that comes off the ocean is incredible. That's why you always see highly abundant towns um, and highly abundant areas around the ocean. It's not just the view. It's it's because the chi is so vital and so strong and it lifts us up. Same thing with a lake. You know, you got a lot of uh, chi that's coming off a lake or a forest or something like that. So all of that feeds us. So make sure that you use that to your advantage. All right. Third plan is brought by Kate. Three story. Um, so again, Kate, you must have a great view too. <laughs> Looks like maybe you two sent these uh, from the same area. So the main floor is predominantly uh, storage. It's garage and storage and kind of the unsexy parts of life which isn't a problem. I mean, there, you know, I think a lot of people think that garages and storage spaces are actually bad and they're not when it comes to feng shui. Um, you know, you have to recall that your car is what allows you to go out into the world and make friends and go out into the world and make your money. And then guess what you do? You bring that home. So those areas can actually be quite auspicious as long as they're clean and organized and well kept. Um, you know, I would say, yeah, it, again, you've got an incredible deck that is probably overlooking an amazing view. Um, you may have some sticky issues around being able to find good quality people in your life. You may feel like, um, kind of like you're an island, that you have to always do everything and it's always on your shoulders. And so that can be really taxing and can really wear you out. Um, but I would say that the, the big thing that I'm really seeing is health. What is going on with health? Um, head, ears maybe? Um, yeah, it just looks like you definitely, um, you're going to experience some financial issues, uh, money going down the drain, or it just might feel like it's taxed. Um, 
you got a lot of uh, resources being taxed and, and um, resources are uh, just kind of getting washed away. And it might feel like uh, you're experiencing a lot of ups and downs. And so if I was to take this and put the overall picture together, you know, um, instability, just overall, your foundation's being kind of rocked. Um, definite big question around health and what's going on around the health of your, your life. Um, you know, do you, are you experiencing something in the head or with the ears? That's what I heard was ears. Um, and is it causing financial distress or maybe, you know, uh, causing some frustration because maybe you can't get to the answer of it um, and you're unable to find the support that you need, you know, to get the answers. So this is one of those challenges. I don't know if you are uh, about to purchase this home or living in this home. If you are living in this home, I'd be interested to hear your comments below to see if this resonates with you. Um, the big thing would be, uh, again, looking at those top five disruptors, you know, doing everything that you can in your front door. Again, you have no living space on the, the primary floor of your home. It's just garage and storage, and that's not a bad thing. But what tends to happen is, as an interior designer, when I see homes like this, we tend to ignore those areas because it's a transition space. So we tend to, you know, kind of overlook the fact that there's shoes everywhere and coats everywhere and things are just dumped around because eh, I'm going upstairs because that's where the living space is. So be mindful of how you enter and exit the home and what that experience is like and how that affects your personal chi. Uh, second floor, which is where the main living area is, you know, be mindful of um, the kitchen and uh, the bathroom, you know, just make sure that that area is very pretty and um, inviting, you know, and, and uh, make sure that it is indicative of warmth and intimacy and, and good health. I would definitely recommend, I have a fantastic podcast uh, called 13 Ways to uh, Cultivate Your Chi. And I've also got one on how to uh, really create a health altar with your refrigerator in my podcast as well, or on my podcast. Um, you know, if you're not taking care of yourself, it's definitely going to affect uh, health and it ultimately is going to affect your finances. So, um, and you know, the way that the house is set up, it looks like it's a two bedroom house. So, you know, which bedroom are you in? Uh, are you at the front of the house or the back of the house? That could also um, deplete your chi. And if you're experiencing health issues, that's going to further deplete your chi. So, and you may feel like you're left out, like you're just not a part of the, the big picture or a part of the, the cool kids group. Uh, and that would be indicative of not happy, having uh, supportive people in your life. So I would say illness, uh, something going on with head or ears, um, affecting finances for sure. Um, resources are heavily taxed and just feeling like you're experiencing a lot of ups and downs, just overall complications in life. So do everything that you can to make these spaces beautiful and inviting. Make sure that you're taking care of your health altar. Again, go back to that podcast and listen to how to treat a refrigerator and just food in general. And I would also say, make sure that you're working on your personal chi. If you're uh, battling some type of health issue and you don't have the support that you need to get the answers that you need, that is going to deplete your chi and that's going to ultimately affect your feng shui. All right. If you'd like to get your floor plan read, you'll see a pop-up that comes up. Just enter in your information there. You'll get a booklet that explains what to do and how to do it. And don't forget to check out that podcast, Home Energy Design, to learn more about feng shui and the things that you should be doing to get your energy right. Be sure to hit that subscribe button below. And hey, trust the vibe because the energy never lies. Yeah.